Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next Axure lesson. Before we start building interactions together, let's take a look at some of the different elements that are inside of an Axure interaction, because there's a lot going on in here. Now, let's say we wanted to build an interaction on this button. We start with the button because that's where the action is happening. And then we come over here to the interactions pane. Now, Axure, since Axure 9, gives you two options. You can either click new interaction and start building the interaction in side of the right pane, which I don't love because it feels like a small strip of bacon and I'm trying to get a much bigger look at things. Or we can click this icon, which I think is not a great represent representation of what we're doing, but it will take you to the interaction editor. Now the interaction editor starts with events. The event is our trigger. What has to happen for the action to happen? So if we're dealing with a button, did people click on the button? Did they double click on it? Did they right click or context menu on it? Did the mouse button go down? Did the mouse button go up? Did somebody move the mouse relative to this widget? Did the mouse enter this widget, which is sort of a mouse over? Did the mouse leave this widget? Did the mouse hover over this widget? And we'll talk about the difference between hover and enter in the navigation menus lesson. Did someone long click or long press? I have found that one more useful for uh, Android stuff, but if you've got a use for it, great. Did someone type a key because a key is going down or up? And with certain ones, there are different triggers or events. So you will see some different ones here late in this list for different types of Axure widgets. But in general, you will often see, hey, Axure, I need you to do something because this widget moved it rotated, it got resized, it was shown because it was invisible, it was hidden because people could see it and we made it invisible, it got focus because people clicked into it or tabbed into it, that's usually a form field. They lost focus, and again, we'll talk about focus when we do form fields. It was selected or unselected, or it was either. The error state was set, or the error state was removed, or, hey, this thing just loaded up. It appeared on the page and there's something I want you to do. Now, I don't use that very often because if you put something into loaded, sometimes people have no idea why something is happening. Hey, something is already happening. I can't figure out where in the prototype it's happening. And it's because it was some button or thing loaded up. You can do that, but it can be a little hard on your future self or other people who see your file who can't find it. Once we establish what event will trigger action to wake up and see whether or not it wants to create action, now we've got actions, also known as lightning bolts, as I like to call them. So we've got lots of actions that Axure can take, and uh, these are usually about the same based on different widgets. We can open a link. So that could be a link out on the web or another page in our prototype. We can close a window. We can open a link into a frame. 
We can scroll to a widget, the old anchor link in HTML. We'll be doing these in, in an upcoming lesson. We can show or hide something, again, that visible or invisible element. We can set a panel state of a dynamic panel, which doesn't make much sense if you haven't seen dynamic panels before, so we'll get there. We can set text, which means writing something somewhere. So putting text or numbers onto a thing, which we will do together. Set image, which replaces an image with another one. Set selected or checked, we will do together. That's where you want to check off a box or select a radio button. Set selected list option would be if you have a medium fidelity drop list and you want actually to pre-select or, or select a certain option. Set the error state which we'll talk about in form fields. Enable disable, I've already promised you a lesson on. I need you to move something. I need you to rotate something. I need you to change the size of something. I need you to bring something to the front or send it to the back. So if you're having a layering issue, I need you to set opacity. I've never used this. I'm more likely to use my global widget styles than to make opacity part of an interaction. Uh, set focus, so put the cursor into a certain form field or spot. Expand and collapse tree nodes. I do not use Axure's trees and tables, so I'll, I'm not going to be teaching them. If you want to learn them, I'm sure Axure has great tutorials on them. I typically don't use them. If we were doing repeaters, which again is in my advanced course, sorts, filters, pagination, rows, and deleting, and we are going to learn some of these ones at the bottom. Uh, adaptive views, variable values, and weight are part of core skills. Fire event is in my advanced skills class. Now, once you've chosen one of these, and I'll just grab one as an example. Now, the question is, what is the target? What item on this page or widget is going to be part of this action. So the action I clicked was show or hide. So Axure says, well, what's the target? What thing do you want me to show or hide? Now I can pretend it's the green button. Uh, I can't pretend it's the green button uh, because it's a master. Let's pretend it's one of the other buttons. Now in this third section of this window, it says, okay, I've picked this target. Now notice how much easier these would be to make sense of if we gave them meaningful names. Button, 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 button. I can't even tell them apart. It'd be great if they had names. And we'll do more of that uh, throughout the course. But the question now is, do I want to show this or hide this? Do I want an animation? I've got additional options. So usually the last part of that action is any other special parameters for that target. If we were going to show and hide multiple things, I would say, add another target. And Axure would say, okay, which thing? I can say that button, and I can say, does it show or does it hide? So the recipients of the action, the objects of the action are your targets. So again, in our interaction, we started with an event, which is up here at the top hierarchically. It's a click or a finger tap if this were mobile. Next, we have the action that we want Axure to take, which is showing or hiding something. And then we have the targets. What is the object of the desired action? In this case, the action is showing and hiding. And we've got these targets. Now, as we get more uh, into our lessons, we're also going to learn about writing conditions. Let's talk quickly about conditions, just to get a little bit of baseline knowledge. When you have a condition, you want to give it a name. I like to give things names that remind me what the heck is the user intention here. If you just name it case one or condition one, your future self is not going to know what the heck you were doing. So I think about what is the user's intention here? Why are they clicking this button or what's happening in this case? So I'll give it a better name. Now I'm not gonna do that now. We're just gonna zip through this to get a high level baseline information. But of course, as we build together over the coming lessons, you'll see me give lots of names to lots of cases and conditions, and uh, it'll make more sense. So I can say new condition. Now you see, you're going to have to start building this whole thing. And these can get pretty confusing pretty fast. So let's do a quick overview of these. And together, we'll learn probably about half of these. But let's just have that quick overview. So text value is does 
does a text thing say something? Uh, like, is there a certain letter or number written on something? Value a variable. This will make more sense when you learn variables, but it's the same type of thing for a variable. Letters, numbers, things in a variable. Length is confusing in actual conditions because people think it means uh, distance, pixels, sizing. It actually means how many characters are in the variable, or in this case, how many characters are in the widget. That might sound like, why do I care? But we are going to practice with that one later. And a good example of when I've used that is when I built a kind of fake tweeting interface, where after a certain number of characters, I had to give people an error message and say, your tweet is too long. So then I could say, ah, what's the length of that? Meaning how many characters were in that? And then I could write some conditional logic that tells Axure whether or not to show an error message because they went over the character limit or they were still under the character limit. So that's length. And again, all of these texts are just text on a widget or text on focused widget. Again, we're gonna learn some of these, but not all of these. Selected option is if you are using a medium fidelity actual drop list, which we'll look at later in form fields. Is something disabled? Is something in an error state? Is something selected? We'll see these in action later. State of panel, we're going to use a few times. You'll see that one. Visibility is really simple. Can people see this or not? Is it shown or hidden? Remember, we just had that show and hide action. Well, here's the condition that matches it. Can people see a thing? Well, if they can, do this. If they can't, do this. What key did people press? I show that in my advanced skills class. We're not really gonna go over that here. Cursor, I don't use. Area of widget, I haven't used in years because Axure uh, fixed the reason that I needed to use it. But hypothetically, you could say, is one widget over another widget? And that might make sense if you were building, say, a drag and drop, and you wanted people to only be able to drop it if it's over a certain area, like you have a dotted line box, and they have to drop something in that box. So is the area of one widget over another widget? If it is, do this. If it's not, do this or do nothing. And adaptive views we will learn later in this course, and that's Axure's kind of fake responsive design. It's adaptive design with breakpoints. So are people looking at a particular adaptive view? Well, if so, do this or don't do this. And each of these has lots of parameters and operators that I'm not going to go into now, but you do want to make note of match any and match all because these will be your Boolean and and your or. So basically, if you end up writing multiple conditions for something and you and all of these have to be true, then it's match all. If you write a bunch of conditions and any one of these could be true, then it's match any. And you can see Axure is giving you a still kind of programmery looking version of this, but you can see the ors here. And if I go to match all, you can see the ands here. So the summary is a good place to kind of double check your work. And again, you'll see me doing that in all of our coming lessons. So once I've added a condition to something, Axure gives it a little bit of its own hierarchy. I now have a colored block here. I can click on just this, and you see the box around it, to get just this case. So the case is the condition and the actions separate from the event that created it. But if I really want everything here, I can click on the event, and now I've got the event along with everything. I can click down here, just at the action level. Um, I can click at the target level. This is going to be important because if you context menu click, you'll see there's lots of features here like e editing or deleting this. You'll also see copy and pasting things. And we are going to do that together. And you will see um, how in some cases, copying and pasting interactions you've built can speed things up and sometimes it can mess us up. So we'll learn all about that. But the main thing you want to take away from this lesson is that when it comes to building an Axure, there's a lot of stuff going on and that's really where the learning curve is. But once you can start to get the hang of, okay, 
there's an event that gets things started. Maybe it's people clicked on a thing. Now there's an action. There's something I want Axure to do because people clicked on the thing. Okay, maybe it's showing something. What is it? And am I showing it or hiding it? Then I might have a condition. Hmm, people clicked on this and I want Axure to show this, but only if this other thing is true or has happened or whatever. This is what makes our prototypes realistic. So it's going to feel like a little bit of a learning curve. You are learning to speak Axure's language, but in the end, it's going to be worth it. And remember, you don't have to have memorized everything I just showed you. You're going to learn this more organically as we move through our next lessons and just start building realistic things. You'll see how all of these things come into play and it will feel a lot more natural and certainly more meaningful. So I'll see you in the next lesson.